What's going on guys? I hope everyone out there is doing well. So I'm continuing my quest to find fish in my new home waters. This morning when I put in, I, uh, I had a couple spots picked out that I wanted to try and hit. And along the way, I was just gonna keep my eyes open for anything else that looks good because again, I'm exploring brand new waters. Now I have a handful of spots around here that I know I can go to and catch fish, but that doesn't do me any good and it doesn't really challenge me as an angler if I just keep hammering those same spots. So today I'm gonna to try my best to explore all brand new areas. So when I left the boat ramp, I'm doing one thing you guys, I'm keeping my eyes and ears open. I'm observing the coastline, I'm seeing everything that's around me and I'm trying to figure out where would these fish be based on bait current structure, nearby depth change, all these types of things I talk about. So as I'm heading out to my first spot, I'm hugging the coastline I'm not riding in the middle of the river. I'm not getting to my spot as quick as I can. I'm hugging that coastline and I'm seeing what I could possibly see. I'm looking for grass points. I'm looking for oyster beds. I'm looking for working bait. I'm looking for fish busting bait. I'm looking for active working and diving birds, not just birds kind of walking around on the shoreline, but actively swimming, fishing, and hunting. Uh, so these are some of the things that I look for to try to locate these fish. Now, as I came around this corner, I started noticing that we got a little bit of grassy, uh, uh, little grass blobs and whatnot around here. Usually when you see little grassy spots like this, if you don't know there's oysters under there, it's usually a good indicator that there could possibly be oyster beds under that thing. So stop off and fish around these things. If you have structure, or sorry, if you have current pushing over this structure and you can see a little bit of bait flipping around, definitely stop and fish it. And that's what I saw here especially right up here on this point. I've never fished this point before, but I've already seen trout busting on top. Uh, there's oyster beds down there. You've got a really nice current break. You've got a fast side and a slow side, and that's honestly where today's episode is gonna start out. So I'm gonna tie on my head and Super Spook Jr. Uh, I'm gonna re um, creep up there nice and easy, try not to spook anything if possible, and start making some noise with this uh, topwater bait and see if we can get on a bite. Side. Got him. Right there where the other one was. So I think they're hanging out in front of that, uh, the oysters. <laughs> Might have a little male, a little male grunting at me. Hear that? <laughs> that's so cool all right there's my second fish of the day not a giant but we are keeping trout today my little uh, kids absolutely love to eat dad's fried fish so we're gonna keep a few all right so I've dropped back the tide and the, and the wind is actually in my face or sorry the winds in my face but the uh, currents actually coming right towards my boat so it allowed me to cast up in and present naturally and I'm watching trout work bait right on the edge of this grass line right here so I'm actually in a good casting distance to it. And with this weedless lure, I can throw it into the grass and just work it out slowly and make it look like exactly what they're chasing. Those, here's one. Got him. Little guy. <laughs> I, what I tell you, they're in here, you guys. These are the types of spots to look for. This is a third third trout, not even 30 minutes. This is a little guy, I don't even need to measure him. He's a pretty, pretty little fish. See, dude. All right, that wasn't a bad little spot to start off the day with. I think that was, uh, I came in contact with five fish. I got one in the cooler. One threw back, I lost one at the boat, and I think I had two bad hook sets or they just didn't commit on the, on the lure. Either way though, not, not a bad start to the morning. Um, what I wanna do though is continue on with my game plan and that's work my way towards that sound. Uh, I wanna keep targeting these grassy islands where there's grassy edges, points, and oyster beds more out towards uh, the cooler water. So one of the things I mentioned in last week's video at the very end, I was exhausted too, by the way, when I was uh, doing that closing, is these river systems and whatnot, um, as the water warms up, this dissolved oxygen in the water is going to decrease. 
What you have to remember is dissolved oxygen is what fish need to breathe. It's the same reason why when we breathe in and breathe out, that air circulates through our lungs and we're able to function and live. Um, when you get lower dissolved oxygen levels in the water due to warmer water, these fish are not comfortable. They can't breathe as easy and they're not gonna hold in these types of areas. Um, so if you find yourself in warm, shallow water areas or low current periods where the water temperature looks to be warm and you're not catching any fish, get out of there. You're wasting your time to be honest with you. Um, even some redfish will just basically sit and reserve their energy and not swim, not move, not chase bait. They will just sit right there because they're basically holding their breath, uh, waiting for this current to come back in and for everything to pick back up. So that's honestly why I position myself fishing the sounds once the water temperatures start to warm up. Uh, another reason is the salinity levels are higher out here. You have to think trout specifically and flounder, they want higher salt levels. Uh, it's just, it, it is what it is. Redfish don't matter. Redfish can hang out in salt water, fresh water, brackish water. You can go to Bass Pro in Savannah and find redfish swimming around in their freshwater tank with, with uh, other bass and they don't have a problem with it. But trout and flounder specific, they want to be in higher salinity levels. Um, another thing too is if you guys are used to fishing these back creek systems, after a couple days of rain, you have all this water that's constantly being drug out through the creeks and through the rivers and out into the main areas where the freshwater basically gets worked out. Well, during that process, all that freshwater is flushing out the salt water. Now you can look a little deeper for these fish uh, where the salinity is a little better the deeper you go, but for the most part, that salinity is not going to be where it wants to be. The trout are not going to be comfortable and it's not going to make for a great fishing day. Again, that's why I come to the sound during the summertime. The only downside is, is out here, you're open and exposed to the elements. If it's a windy day, you're going to feel it. Uh, so you really have to be a little more selective with your days or just understand how to fish the sound based on the current wind conditions and whatnot, how to set up your boat, position your boat, how to get in on, good, on casting on certain areas and whatnot. Uh, basically knowing the limitations of your boat. But I just wanted to break that down for you guys real quick. I noticed that was about three minutes, so I hope I didn't take your time up too much, but I just wanted to share some of these tips, uh, kind of what's going on in my head when I'm out here fishing and how I pre-plan my trips based on the season. So, all right, we'll get this trolling motor up. I'm gonna point this boat east and uh, let's keep diving towards the ocean. <laughs> All right, so I'm fishing a creek point right now. You guys can see there's a there's a, a lot of disturbance here. It's a rip. You basically have an oyster point that goes all the way out to the very edge of this rip, and it drops off pretty st pretty steep on this backside. Um, you can most likely find the fish sitting on the backside or sitting just a little bit off of all this disturbance on the edge of this grass right here, and this is where they're going to wait and ambush. If they're on this side, they're basically down, looking up, waiting for something to come up and over that hump so they can eat it and then go back down. Because just on the other side of that depth change, there's not going to be a lot of current. The majority of the current, as this tide comes in, is going to just flush right over the top. But it is going to create a little bit of an eddy. It's going to, not, not so much an eddy, but just a lot of disturbance in the water. And it's going to get bait spun around. And it's going to be a great place for these fish to ambush. Now, for so long, I used to never fish these flood tide phases, especially if it was in the middle of the phase. All day long, I would go out and I would target these redfish up on the flats because I have a boat that I can push around real skinny. And the very opposite of that, at the bottom of these, uh, these tides, because the water's completely dropped out and I could sight cast these redfish a lot easier. But I wouldn't waste a whole lot of time in between these tide phases because there's so much water and so much current movement, right? So you have a normal tide around here in this uh, mid-Atlantic region is like seven feet. Well, when you have a full moon, especially a full moon summer tide, you start getting a foot to a foot and a half, almost two feet over your normal high tide. And then you're still looking at a negative tide on the bottom end. So sometimes you could have nine to nine and a half feet of tidal movement. Got him. <laughs> Sitting on that backside. Nine to nine and a half feet of tidal movement on a normal uh, six hour window. That's a good trout. Let's see if I can not lose him at the boat. Got him in. 
So I would avoid those types of these types of areas for so long, but then once I figured out where these trout are sitting normally uh, at these high tide spots, I just really slow it down and focus on where are these fish gonna sit, and that's a prime example of it. And I'm glad I caught this fish. They got a chance for me to shore up my story. So she's a good size keeper. That's a 16 inch trout right there. Beautiful girl. So there you go. Let's keep throwing and see if I can grab any more on the back side of that thing. There's one. Old head shaker. Got him on the voodoo. You might be a little short though, buddy. <laughs> no, a little male grunting. So I just drifted this little island. I didn't get anything on this right side. It was, uh, it was muddy the whole time. And then as soon as I got around this corner, uh, again, around the point, that's where that trout was sitting. Now it's, it's not the clearest over here, but it's not bad. There are some little bits of, uh, of green water in here. So maybe we'll bump into some more. I'm going to keep throwing out. This is just that popping cork. I put the, uh, the paddle tail away cause I wanted to make more noise. Muddy water, you gotta, you gotta make noise however you can. So that's why the cork came out. So let's throw this thing around a little bit. See if I can grab another one, at least a big one. There he is. Again, another one. All right, I'm done with the shrimp. <laughs> That's three misses. All right, let's see if they want to eat a fish profile. Got him out of the boat. He was following it up too. <laughs> He's a little better. Another little male grunting away. 13, see ya, buddy. All right, guys, so I'm proud to announce that I have set up and established a Patreon account. Now, Patreon is something that I've been on the fence about for quite some time, mainly because I just don't like free handouts. But I've had an overwhelming uh, amount of emails and messages and whatnot coming from you guys asking how can you give back and how can you ultimately support me with what I'm doing. So after thinking about it, I found a way to do it through Patreon. Now, you guys will see once you log on to my account, um, I have different tiers set up that offer different types of rewards. Everything from just the basic entry level, I like what you're doing and I wanna give a little bit here, all the way down to the spot exposed videos that I used to do back in the day. Now, it doesn't matter or if you're in Hilton Head, if you're in Savannah, or if you're down in Richmond Hill, Shelman's Bluff area, I have videos specifically for those three regions. And inside these videos, you're gonna find everything. I lay it all out. I show you the spot to fish. I tell you the best tide to fish it. I tell you the best weather to fish it. I show you exactly how to fish this spot, what baits, it's all there, you guys. It's everything that's inside here, I put it into that video and it will help you get out there and successfully catch these fish. So if you're interested in checking out my Patreon account, you guys, I appreciate the support. Head on over and let me know what you think. Big trout here. The big old slab of Rooney. Caught her. She was sitting in the grass right over here. I was just chatting with these uh, these guys over here. 
Mr. Josh is over here. There you go, brother. That's what I just caught. Josh also lives in that neighborhood. He actually butts up right behind me. It's a beautiful trout. You think she wanted the rats to... It's awesome. This little grassy island is so nice. I talk about quality fish. It doesn't get any better quality than this right here. Gorgeous fish. Male, he's still grunting. This is about as big as these males are going to get as well. All right. Got a couple fish in the boat. Gonna have a good little fish fry tonight.